This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on Wednesday, January 27, 2016, here at the Niles Public Library. My name is Helene Sonkin, and I am a member of the, Re of the Patron Services staff here at the library. I am privileged today to be speaking with my stepfather, Mr. Rolf Hellman, who was born in Hertzfelde, Germany, in October of 1925, and who now lives in Palatine, Illinois. Uh, Mr. Hellman has kindly consented to be interviewed for this project. We will now begin the interview. I don't know if I should just call you Rolf or Mr. Hellman. You can call me Rolf. Okay, Rolf. Um, can you tell me when you first entered the service? Right after I graduated high school, I entered in March 1944. Okay, and where were you living at that time? In Chicago. Okay, and what were you doing before? You mentioned you were in high school. I so. was in high school. Okay. Um, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Okay. Uh, what branch of the service were you in? In the Army. And why did you pick that branch of the service? Oh, I was eager and I wanted to fight. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> uh, were, uh, where were you inducted? In Ch uh, Fort Sheridan, Illinois. And uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what your first days were like. Well, I was with about a few thousand other people that either were drafted or enlisted, and mainly routine paperwork, physical exams, and, uh, and being indoctrinated. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your boot camp, your training experiences, for example, what it was like being away from home, your drill instructors, your living conditions, any lifestyle adjustments that you had to make? Okay, my boot camp was in Camp Blanding, Florida, and uh, we took our basic training there, which was a normally a 16-week basic training, infantry training. It was quite an adjustment, but uh, was not too hard for me. I was used to uh, a little bit of military training because I had ROTC training in Chicago when I was in high school. But uh, basic training is mainly getting used to Army life. The sergeant in charge is the, like a god. He, do what he tells you, you know, and that's it. What, uh, what was the question you were asking me? No, just, just that oh, about oh, what it was okay. like and, and, so we, and we went lifestyle on, adjustments. It was in the summertime, it was very hot in Florida. We lived with all kinds of strange creatures, alligators and so on. Uh, I had to contend with uh, wild pigs that gave us a hard time because they would dig into our tents at night when we were on a, when we were away from our tents and dig up all the food that we were had and, and so on. But uh, other than that, it was just heavy physical training. Okay. Uh, where did you go after boot camp? After boot camp. Uh, we went for advanced military training in Camp Shelby, Mississippi, where they started a new infantry division. It was the 65th Infantry Division. We were, I was in Camp Shelby until, I believe, um, October or November 1944 when we were sent Overseas, the whole division went overseas. We joined the General Patton's Third Army, and at the time in France, we had a uh, we relieved a uh, division that was there already. The twenty, I believe, was the Twenty Sixth Infantry Division, and the. Uh, we relieved them man by man or squad by squad. They would 
give that would give them a chance to uh, go on on uh, rest, you know. Okay. okay. Was that considered advanced training, or was that? That that was it advanced basic. training. That was advanced. See, the, in in Florida was a basic training, and this was advanced training. Okay. Did you have any stateside assignments? Uh, at the time, no. I was uh, in the 65th Infantry Division. My assignment was at a heavy weapons platoon, which was uh, heavy machine guns and mortar. Uh, so we had specialized training in that. But as soon as the division was ready and our commanders thought they were ready, we were sent overseas. Okay. Uh, when did you depart for overseas duty? Do you remember? I, I believe it was in October of 1944. Okay. And um, from where did you depart? Uh, we left uh, New York. We landed in La Havre, France. Okay. So how did you how did you travel to France? By troop ship. By troop ship. Okay. And where did you land? You said France. Yeah, in France, La Havre. Okay. And uh, what was your outfit at that time? The 65th Infantry. Okay. Um, what was its mission? To fight the Germans. Okay. And where was your unit first assigned? In, in France. I don't remember the name of the uh, place, but in, in France. Okay. Uh, what was your first job? First job was as a gunner in a uh, uh, in my company, Company D. Let's see, I was a gunner in a mortar, uh, a heavy mortar uh, company. So I, I was a gunner in that. And uh, do you recall what rank you were at that time? At the time, I believe I was, uh, I was a sergeant first, I mean, uh, PFC, private first class. Okay. Um, and what was, what was your life like at that time, would you say? Trying to stay alive, you know, because we were in the infantry, there was a lot of fighting, and the uh, main mission is when you hear enemy shells coming in, that you knew how to duck and hit the ground so it doesn't kill you. Yeah. Understandable. Um, where did you sleep? On the ground, wherever you could find a place to sleep. Okay. We didn't have tents, so you just uh, find a place to, to sleep in. Um, what did you have to eat? Filet mignon. <laughs> 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 Whatever we could find, okay. you know, it was during the war, to, and um, we were advancing into France, into Germany. We would, I had an advantage since I spoke German. I was able to find some pretty good uh, food and uh, houses where we could sleep, actually. Eat, eat anything we could find. Okay. Um, were you able to stay in touch with your family? We were permitted to send uh, postcards. I forgot the name of those postcards that they had. But we could not tell them where we were or what we were doing, but we tell them, you know, that we were fine. So no, no, no email or telephones. Okay. So everything was censored. Every everything was censored. Right. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about the the pressure, the stress that you felt at that time. It, uh, main pressure was to stay alive and try and kill as many enemies as you could. Yeah. But, uh, 
that was my our main job. Did you have any um, USO shows? We've all seen, you know, Bob Hope and all the. No, things. we didn't have that. No famous entertainers no came famous to. No famous entertainer. We did our own entertaining. So no morale boosting celebrities from Hollywood came. No, not uh, when I was there. Okay. Um, what did you do when you were on leave? Did you travel? Were you able to come home? Well, we didn't have any leave until after the war. And then we had a choice. Army um, gave us a choice. Do you want to go to Italy, Switzerland, uh, or Austria, I believe. So I decided to go to Switzerland because every place in Europe was destroyed, mostly. I didn't want to see any more destruction than I had to. Switzerland was neutral, so we decided, I decided to go to Switzerland and had a, for two weeks, I believe, and had a wonderful time. So that was after the war? That was after the war, right. You don't have any leave during the war. Okay. Um, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? Uh, after the war? Uh, in oh. general, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, there, you know, something, a, a, a happy memory or something that, you know, brings back a good memory as opposed to a, a dark memory of war. Well, I, one thing I, I remember was during the war we were stayed, I found my company's Avena's house that belonged to the mayor of the little city where we were in, and during the night, they had went to bed in a feather bed, which is something that was very unusual for us. And we fell asleep, and during the night, our planes came over and started strafing us because they thought we were the enemy. We advanced so fast. So, in just about uh, oh, a few hundred feet from where we stayed was a big ammunition down. So I remember getting out of the house when they were strafing us, the plane, our own planes were strafing us, and we jumped over the fence and to get away from our own troops, our own uh, planes that were strafing us. So I never moved so fast in my life as at that time. I can imagine. Um. Do you have any photographs or did you keep a diary or any other mem memorabilia from your days in the service? No, I have none. It's nothing. But what I had uh, got lost or was lost. So you did have, you just don't I had have. some, yes, you know, letters of course and so on, but I still didn't keep any of it. Okay. Um, what was or when was your unit first in combat, do you recall? Yes, in, um, I believe it's in October of 1944. Okay, and where was that? That was in, in, in France. Okay, and you're, I think you did answer this question already, but it's showing up again. What was your assignment at that time? Yeah, as I mentioned, I was an, a gunner in a heavy weapons company. Okay, and your experience with that for your first combat? To like I mentioned before, to distinguish between enemy shells and our own shells. They have a special sound that the enemy shells make when they come at you. So when you hear them coming, hit the ground. So I did not know that. Um, anything that uh, stands out in your memory from that first combat? Yeah, I was scared. Was scared. Yeah because we did not know what to expect. Um, do you remember what happened? Mm. Seems kind of like a broad question, mm. but... Yeah, no, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't remember, except we were actually trained by the people that we relieved. They kind of gave us, uh, told us, you know, what to expect. They're the ones that told us 
the difference between enemy shells coming in and our own shells going out from our heavy artillery. So there's a lot of noise, but uh, after a while you learn to distinguish the sound. Okay. Uh, do you recall any casualties from your unit? Uh, yes, we had casualties, but I don't, uh, you know, we were relatively lucky. We were, we were you know, uh, the, whole, the whole division, I don't remember what the casualties were, but uh, probably a couple thousand, I don't remember exactly what they were, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so uh, talking about your, um, your time after your service, um, describe for me what it was like the day that your service ended, if you recall. Yes, I, I remember uh, when the war ended, we were in Austria, and the uh, first time in my life I got so drunk that I don't, that actually got sick. All right. And uh, that's what I remember about that day. Okay. Um, when and where were you discharged? I was, right, I just remember I was in uh, General Patton's Third Army. We were assigned to General Patton's Third Army. But after the war, we would. Actually, I was not discharged. I was in uh, Fort Sheridan, and I was joined the reserve, uh, United States Army Reserve. And uh, and that was in nineteen forty-six, I believe, August forty-six, somewhere around there. And what was the next question? Um, what did you do in the days and weeks after that time? Okay. Um, I, when I joined the reserve, I went to, I was told uh, uh, that since I was in the infantry during the war, that I might want to uh, join the uh, military intelligence division which is what I did in the reserve. So I went to school at military intelligence and once a week, and I also uh, went to college under the GI Bill you know, for four years. But every week we went to training. I had our training okay. once, once a week. Okay. Um. So you went back to school then? I went back to school, right, then okay. I was in Chicago. Okay, and did you work at that time or just concentrate on school? No, I, I, I always had part-time jobs, but, uh, you know, going to school. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that your education was supported by the GI Bill. Right. Okay. Um, what did uh, you go on to do as a career after the war? After the war, since I graduated from with a degree in uh, let's say a Bachelor of Science in, uh, what did I get it? Uh, accounting, I believe, was what I majored in. So my first job was with a company called Teletype Corporation. And uh, I worked there for few years. Didn't particularly like the job, but it was a job. Okay. Did you eventually marry and have a family? Yes, I, I got married, uh, had a daughter, and then the Korean War started, so then I was called back into active duty, but I was because of the training I had, I did not go back into the infantry. I was in uh, what is now called National Security, at the time was called Army Security Agency. And I went, I was sent to 
Massachusetts, that's where the headquarters was, and to Washington, D.C. And uh, spent, uh, luckily, did not go overseas. I was spent uh, the Korean War in either Washington, D.C. and uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah. Well, the Korean War started uh, when I was, just when I finished college, when I graduated from college. But I was called back because I was in the reserve and I could not go to my graduation exercises because uh, uh, at, uh, they had to send me my diploma because I was called back into the, into the Korean War and I went to Washington, D.C. And I was trained, I trained in the uh, CIC, which was a counterintelligence corps. I was at, during my uh, reserve training was in the CIC, counterintelligence. And I went to Washington, D.C. I was transferred to the ASA, which is the Army Security Agency, now known as the National Security Agency. And I was stationed in Baltimore, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. But I was lucky I never went overseas. And the funny part was that uh, uh, in those days, the Army Security Agency people, their job was to intercept uh, enemy communication, Morse code and stuff like that. So uh, the job was very secretive. You had to have a top secret classification, <coughs> which I, I had, but it was so top secret that nobody knew what the heck you were doing. And I was in a, one of the, either the Pentagon or one of the other big uh, buildings up on the, one of the top floors. I had an office up there, but I had very little to do because nobody could come in there without authorization. So most of my time was spent reading books and uh, taking it easy. That was my accomplishment during the <laughs> Korean War. Okay. Okay. Um, did you stay in contact with any of your wartime buddies after the service? Uh, did you continue any of those relationships? And no, we did not, because we were just spread out all over the country, and unfortunately I did not. I wish I had. Okay. Um, did you join any uh, veterans organization? Mm, no. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, and, well, since you said you did not um, join any veterans organizations, then that would mean that you didn't attend any, any. reunions. To meetings and stuff like that, no. Okay, okay. All right, well, we're, we're winding down. Um, <coughs> how, how would you say that your, your service and experiences affect your life today? I was, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I felt very fortunate that I was able to join the Army and be of service. <coughs> and the fact that I was in the GI Bill, I probably could never have gone and finished college except for the GI Bill. So what, uh, I, uh, like I said, I was very fortunate. So you're a proud veteran. Yes, I'm, I never regretted the fact that I was able to serve. Yeah. Basically, you know, the reason I joined the reserve was so I would not have to go back into the infantry. That's why I went to to school and CIC school, which is counterintelligence school, and then got transferred to the National Security Agency or Army Security Agency. So then I was teaching German to American officers when I was there. And during 
during the war, of course, we didn't mention that. You know, I, right after the war, I was in a, interviewing, I was telling Neil, prisoners of war, German prisoners of war, and certified that they were okay to be discharged. Or not, we had a big book of all the, at the time of all the war criminals and stuff like that. We had to make sure that they were not wanted for so crimes against humanity. Crimes against humanity, like okay. you said, right? Okay, that's great. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Yes. Uh, if if you you know you you do what you're told in the military, they don't give you much of a choice. You. Uh, uh, I have uh, really nothing but, looking back, pleasant memories of the military service. No, I was lucky I was not hurt, I was not wounded, and I did not really have any bad experiences. Is there anything else uh, that you would like to add and share with us today that we haven't covered already? Well, the one thing I uh, married to my present wife, Elaine, and I have a very nice family, a very nice stepdaughter who's doing interviewing right now. But uh, no, I've been I've been very lucky and fortunate. Okay, well, Rolf. Um Mr. Hellman, I'm not used to calling you Mr. Hellman, obviously, because you're my stepdad, but, um, you know, thank you very much for coming into the Niles Public Library today and sharing your um, wartime experiences with me, with us. Well, um, thank you, Aline, for having me, and I was glad to do it. And if they have any other questions or so, just let me know. Absolutely.